Hey everyone, welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Well, I know I say this a lot and you guys tell me to ignore it because it's never been an issue, but uh, yeah, we're going to see if we can work around all this noise tonight. I got an air conditioner running in here, which I refuse to shut off because it's, it's about 100 degrees according to... And a psycho dog trying to get out after a rabbit. Yeah, never record at home. covid versus Wi-Fi. This is a shortish one, mainly because I think I blacked out from the sheer stupidity. C equals customer, M equals me. Customer, my Wi-Fi keeps dropping out. Me, I'm sorry to hear that. Let's see if we can figure out what the issue is. 20 minutes of troubleshooting later, the line is fault-free. Router's running correctly. Setup and positioning is correct, and I'm drawing a blank on the cause. As a last ditch, I boot up a mesh analysis tool. Me. I'm seeing some signs of interference. It looks like there's a device broadcasting quite a strong 5 GHz signal on the same frequency as your router. It's coming and going, so likely a mobile device. Have you bought any new wireless electronic devices lately? Customer. No, but my neighbors have just had the vaccine. <laughs> uh, me. I don't see what that has to do with anything. Customer. Obviously, the 5G tracking chip in the shot is interfering with my Wi-Fi. That was where I had a self-defensive stroke. Made some vague comment about changing frequencies and hung up. Had to take a long break to recover from that one. Oh my god. Oh. I need to start a new playlist. We need to do something on conspiracy theories. That would be fantastic. I'll work on that. Always follow your change request procedure. I work for a company that supports a wide variety of products, including self-checkouts, SCO. A specific store wanted to make their SEOs cashless in order to make it less work for staff working in the cash office to balance the lanes, etc. Normally in situations like that, we would expect the customer's help desk to follow their own established process for change requests. It wasn't. The help desk skipped that step and sent a ticket to field service to make the change. Of course, that ticket gets assigned to me. Rather than outright canceling the request and telling help desk to follow the proper procedure, I called the store manager directly. I explained to him that any changes to the functions of the SEOs, including making it cashless, would require a change request to be submitted and approved by their IT department before we can implement the change. He acknowledged that explanation and I closed the ticket. And that was the end of it. Or so I thought. A few months later, a different technician inquired with me about an issue that was difficult for him. The store reported numerous issues with their SEOs not dispensing money correctly. The junior technician had been working on the issue for over a week and was unable to resolve it. I looked into it, and I noticed that it was the same store that had initially requested to convert all of their SEOs cashless. I did some digging around and got a hold of a manager in charge of change management for that company. He said that they did receive a request from that store and it was denied. Okay, let's go to the store and find out exactly what's happening. I spoke to the head cashier. He said that there was an incident where a specific SEO dispensed an extra $5 to the customer. During the investigation, they discovered that all SEOs were short on cash and there was no apparent explanation for it. I started troubleshooting on the SEO in question that dispensed too much cash and couldn't find anything wrong with it. Performed the same set of troubleshooting on other SEOs, also turned up nothing. Throughout the troubleshooting, I spoke to various staff members and they all mentioned the same issue where a customer got an extra $5. Weird. At the end of my shift, I had to pack up and come back the next day to continue working on the issue, as well as do some preventive maintenance. I returned the next day and spoke to a different supervisor. She too said the same thing about the extra $5 being dispensed. Then it clicked. Everyone's story is exactly the same. They got the SEO correct, how much the customer purchased, how much the customer paid, and how much the customer got back in change. Normally when troubleshooting issues like this, I would get a few variations of the story, but in this case, the details were exactly the same, almost like it was rehearsed. So I finished my troubleshooting and ultimately found nothing wrong. I went to the store manager to present my findings. He wasn't happy and stated that if their self-checkouts are losing money and were not able to find the source of the loss, he wants me to make it cashless. 
I again remind him that as per contract with his employer, we cannot make major changes without their prior approval. Store manager. Well, I spoke to Brock N and he said you could. It just occurred to me that he doesn't realize that the person he spoke to months ago is me. Me. Well, no, that's not correct. Store manager. Yes, it is. Quit lying and make it happen. <laughs> me. Sir, allow me to explain. What I said was, we can make it happen, as long as we have your company's approval. I already spoke to them before coming here, and they already told me that they denied your request. Store manager. Wait, you're Brock? Me. Yes. Store manager. And you won't do it? Me. Not without approval. At this point, the manager gave up. I closed the call, as no fault found, and made it billable at close to $250 per hour. With my four hours, plus close to a week of work performed by the other tech, the store didn't try pulling this stunt again. I returned to the store sometime later for an unrelated issue, found that the store used black duct tape to cover up the cash entry. It looks ghetto. I'm not, I'm not sure why this store manager was so hell-bent on getting everything cashless. I mean, yeah, it's somewhat easier, but in the long run... I don't know. I mean, I, I have a retail shop, but it's small scale compared to most grocery stores. Um, I know if I tried to go 100% cashless, I would probably reduce my sales by about 20 to 30%, let's say, give or take. At least 10 to 15. And for a big grocery store, that'd be significant. How much support do you need? The cost of nines. At a previous job, we had a fairly economical server infrastructure, many services running on older desktop machines with desktop-type UPS units. Critical services were mirrored, DNS and LDAP, for example. There was no line conditioning or fire suppression, not even sprinklers. The one thing we actually spent money on was an enterprise-grade file server. When we purchased it, the vendor offered several levels of support, 24-7, MBD, and none. We had upgraded from an older version of this unit and really liked the support offered, so we laid out the cost for the bosses. The 24-7 was pretty pricey. NBD cheaper, but if something happened on a Friday afternoon, it would be Monday before we could get support, unless we paid extra and weekend support was best effort. Everyone agreed losing a weekend's worth of production could be lived with. We couldn't afford those extra nines, so NBD it was. This worked perfectly well for many months, but of course, all good things come to an end. I had been camping with my kids and was driving home on a Sunday. My coworker calls me and says he's been trying to check his email and can't access the mail server. He then tried accessing some other systems and can't reach anything in our server room, which also has our gateway network switch. Coworker is feeling sick. Can I go in and check? I explain I can, but I have to drop my kids off at home first, so it'll be a couple of hours. He decides he'll go in and check. Calls me back in about 45 minutes. Server room AC has completely failed. The doorknob to the server room was actually hot to the touch. What should he do? For weekends, we contact the security folks. They can call in plumbers or electricians or the HVAC folks as required. Meantime, he shuts everything down and props the door open. Puts a fan in the doorway. I join him after I drop my kids off. HVAC guy is there. Compressor on the AC unit. We only have one for this room. Will not turn on. It's Sunday afternoon. The lead HVAC guy will look at it on Monday. In the meantime, he brings over two portable units, which we vent into the plenum. Total jerry-rig, but we get some cooling and are able to bring up a minimal number of services plus network switches. We have no idea how hot the room got. Our economy-grade server room is really biting us. Monday, we get the main AC unit fixed. Room is set at normal temperature, and we return all services to normal. By some miracle, none of our servers has died. But we are scared. We don't know how long after end of business on Friday everything was stewing. We figure out our fancy file server actually has a high-low temperature sensor that will tell us how hot the air input temperature got. It's kind of tricky to get to via command line interface, but we find it. The temperature reached 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're really worried. Schedule a meeting with the bosses. We're now on borrowed time. Stuff is going to start failing way sooner than we would have expected. We're going to have to replace hardware. We should budget for an upgraded AC unit, one with some redundancy. We will implement temperature and power monitoring right away, all stuff that people said was too expensive. Bosses say they will think about it, but everything is working now, right? So we have time, right? 
Two weeks later, our fancy file server fails. On a Friday. Completely. This thing has multiple power supplies, two controller modules with failover, and of course, disks are redundant. But the module that connects the two controller modules is a single point of failure, and it looks like it's dead. We're on the phone for hours with the vendor. They're very good, but they simply do not believe the connection module is bad. It never fails. They've never heard of it. They're trying to locate a spare, but we can't get it until Monday at the earliest. We're flat down all weekend. No one can access our files. No email. Our website is down. Monday, we finally get the part in the afternoon and get it installed. No data loss, so that's good. Big Boss calls us in. New project. Find out how much it'll cost to upgrade the service to 24-7. <laughs> Find out how much to upgrade the AC unit. Come up with a plan to improve uptime across the board. Suddenly, all the stuff that was too expensive is now possible. What I really learned from the entire episode was that folks don't really know how much uptime they need until they actually experience an extended outage. Ain't that the truth. I've seen it happen with automobiles, you know, go for the cheap fix and then, you know, they end up repairing it or maintaining it more often throughout the year. Computers, shoot, even, even wood, you know, being in construction. People buy cheap lumber, you know, cheap composites that really won't hold up to the job and then wonder why everything fails. Do me a favor, send that to the color printer upstairs. A disgusting printer store I'd love to hear some entertaining feedback on. Recently we had an outside company come in and do an audit of access control throughout the building. So they sent in their big brain tech to come and point out where the electrical hazards were in regards to wire gauge and safety features from an electrical code standpoint and where the access control hardware was installed incorrectly, etc. It took a while, like hours and days of running around with a ladder and flashlight, but they finally compiled and sent in a report of their findings. We were emailed a link to a PDF. This beast of a file was just under 750 megabytes. Do you fellow nerds ever normally run into PDFs that are this massive? I'd love to hear it. I've never dealt with one quite that large for any normal reason. It was easily two or three times the size of the biggest PDF I retain, which is a giant digital tool manufacturer catalog. My boss said he could not open it on his computer, so I told him I would look into it. So I set the thing to download from the site, came back and opened it later. It was several hundred full page, full color phone pictures along with like 20 pages of text. Now I cannot stress this enough. Printing these pictures has no value to anyone in our company. It was just the insides of several access control metal boxes. You don't need to make a darn coffee table book out of this stuff. It's just piles of circuit boards and wires with no labels, all jumbled together. It's a long, very detailed story about the value of each photos, and I'll spare you the sermon. But my tech support brothers, please trust me on this. These pictures don't need to be printed, and nobody will miss them. So my boss calls me back as fast as his fingers can dial the extension. Do me a favor, send that to the color printer upstairs. Lol, no problem. This guy just loves sending stuff to the color printer. Let me tell you. So I did just that, straight up. FYI, it's one of those huge printers that comes right up to your chest. As the infernal contraption was turning away up in the ivory tower, I selected the entire contents of the PDF, copied and pasted them into a text file and emailed that to him. I thought this might be helpful. All the relevant info you can share in 20 kilobytes. None of the 50 tons of digital diarrhea. This reduced the file size by around 99.9972%, but he would never have noticed or cared. He comes trotting down from the printer with his near 2 inch thick stack of papers, prattling on about how this can be shown to the electrician or something. I never thought much of it. My mind is still reeling from trying to figure out why he always wants dumb worthless BS printed off. So the end of the day comes. I go home. It's the final day before a quick holiday. And what story do I hear when I come back next week? Apparently, this 740 megabyte PDF mangled the printer queue. So it printed once. Then, apparently, the printer thought, Oh, this item is still in the queue. I better start it again. And so it did. Now, somehow, magically, this kept happening. And we're shut down during the pandemic. So there are only a very scarce few managers upstairs to hear the printer yelping that it's out of paper or out of toner. Well, what do they know? They just keep feeding paper into the tray and pressing continue. I guess this went on for a few days until finally the other managers called my boss and were like, are you done printing this giant manual? Other departments have to use the printer, you know. So my boss went up there to see what was going on and saw the murder scene. 
Apparently, IT had to be called to basically kick the cord out of the big printer because it was possessed by Satan at that point. I think the IT dude said that the file had printed itself over 40 times. We now have a stack of pictures of circuit boards. It's rumored to be near 3 feet tall. Nobody has ever seen the entire pile of paper in one room. I'd estimate two decades worth of scrap note paper for the department. All this for pictures nobody cares about and notes you can share in an instant. Uneffing believable. Somebody really needs to educate this manager for one. He's wasting time and paper and yeah, just not good. Offsite backups? Yes, we have one of those. A while back I worked for a tiny MSP and we got a call from a non-customer in a panic. They were very keen on the security of their company files and the designs that were their trade. So much so that they had no local copy. Instead, every night they copied their working folder to a write once live DVD, then deleted all the files off their daytime disk, and the boss took the DVD home. Ooh, nothing could go wrong there. Next day, copy it all back on and repeat. The problem is that to make a live file system work on a write once DVD, the DVD writer has to rewrite the table of contents after it writes the new files. And until the day it doesn't, they don't notice and nobody knows until they try to load the files back on the next day. Did I mention that their files weren't all that big? They'd been using that same DVD for years. It was the only copy of all their company data. Oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, I've made backups of things on DVDs and CDs and thumb drives, external drives, but never as my sole copy. Oof. Backup? We have a raid, don't we? And there's a lot of backup stories today. A story from here a few days ago reminded me of a customer I had back in like 2008 or something like that. We were a rather new IT consulting company providing all the services for small and mid-sized companies up to being a mid-sized MSP later on. Kind of a success story actually. So I was talking to the customer about a new setup for their single on-site server. It was a Dell server with a physically installed domain controller which also served as a file server and print server if I remember correctly. Backup was done on a tape, which should get exchanged daily, but was forgotten about every second day or so. The usual. I was consulting him to a new server machine and splitting up the functions a bit with virtualization. <laughs> by which we could do the backup using snapshots stored on an NAS. Something like that. We were still talking concepts. Of course, the customer figured out the newer setup would be more sophisticated, resulting in more money. He then got an idea about backups. Mr. OP, I have a RAID, don't I? It's mirrored, isn't it? Me. Yes, RAID 1 mirrored. Customer speaking while moving in the direction of the server. So I can just take out one drive and put it somewhere safe like taking it home. Note, server was just behind the next door. Small companies. While I was still thinking of a reply, I heard a beep 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 from the server. Customer returned smiling with a hard drive in his hand. <laughs> I don't know what face I made in that moment, but it sure wasn't pleased. I tried pinging the server. Nada. It took us an emergency act up into the night to rebuild the raid properly. Actually, I don't know exactly why I crashed so hard since in theory the customer was right. Of course, the idea was still a bad one. Yeah, seems like a lot of bosses, supervisors, company owners, uh, yeah, they don't, they seem to have a lot of bad ideas. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you've enjoyed this content, would you do me a favor? Would you consider giving this video a like? Oh my god, she's scratching at the door. Maybe subscribe to the channel and click that little bell icon so you don't miss the fat guy with the beard telling you stories. See ya!